Okay. Will you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 9th Town Council meeting. Can I please have the roll call? Mr. Dixon? Mr. Flynn? Here. Mr. Schlapper? Here. Mrs. McGuaw? Here. Mayor DiGlio? Here. Mr. Dixon notified us that he would not be attending this evening. <clears throat> In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Notice of this regular meeting was given to the two newspapers of record and posted on the official bulletin board on January 2nd, 2020. At this point, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 20th, February 24th special meeting and February 24th regular meeting? So moved for the minutes on those two dates. Second. I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 24th special and regular meeting by Deputy Mayor Flynn and a second by Councilwoman LaFleur. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Flopper? Yes. Mrs. LaFleur? Yes. Mayor DeGlio? Yes. At this point in the meeting, the Town Council welcomes comments from any member of the public on any topic. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit the opportunity for anyone who wishes to be heard, speakers are asked to take one turn at the microphone and please limit their comments to five minutes. The clerk will keep time. If reading from a prepared statement, please provide a copy and email a copy to the clerk's office after making your comments so it may be properly reflected in the minutes. Council may choose to comment after the entire public portion has concluded. Is there anyone in the public who would like to make any comments at this time? With no one coming forward, I will close that portion of the, the meeting and move on to council and manager reports. I will start, okay, with my own comments. The first I would like to read is the census. Getting a complete and accurate census count is critically important. That's why your response is required by law. If you do not respond, the U.S. Census Bureau will follow up in person to collect your response. Why is the census so important? The results are used to determine how much funding local communities receive for key public services and how many seats each state gets in Congress. State and local officials also use census counts to draw boundaries for congressional, state legislature, and school districts. And while you are required by law to participate, the Census Bureau is also required by law to protect your answers. Your responses are used only to produce statistics. The Census Bureau does not disclose any personal information. So I, having had um, the gentleman from the census come here and actually give a report, encourage everyone to do the census this year. Moving on to my comments, on February 26th and on March 3rd, I attended the St. Patrick's Parade meetings, and the firemen have done a great job securing sponsors for the parade, arranging for advertising and getting participants. I want to thank the department for taking on this responsibility and for all their efforts so that this parade may continue to be celebrated. As you know, this parade is going to take place on March 21st and will take off at 11 o'clock and will be on Spring Street down Moran Street to the park. On February 27th, both Councilman Dixon and myself, along with Lorraine Reed, attended the Future Farmers of America luncheon and meeting. As in the past, I'm impressed by the quality of the members of this organization. The students are well organized and very respectful. It is a pleasure speaking with them and being allowed to attend their meeting. On February 28th, I attended the pre-construction meeting for the pool. There were several concerns brought up by the contractor. Hopefully these concerns have been addressed and Tom can report on the final decisions. On March 7th, I attended the ribbon kenning for Shanna Bridal Shop. After so many years, it is a pleasure to see a bridal dress shop on Spring Street and I wish Lisa, the owner, the best of luck. Those are my comments for this evening so far. Dan? I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Helen? So just a reminder for all of our seniors in town that we have our senior spring luncheon coming up on March 22nd um, at noon at uh, the Newton High School cafeteria. So the Rec Commission is putting that on and um, our seniors will be treated to um, the showing of Matilda 
the musical afterwards. So that's the day after the parade on the 21st, senior spring luncheon on the 22nd. So it's a great day. Um, about 80 seniors come out. They're treated to um, a free luncheon, all the fix-ins, and uh, including desserts, which I know is always a favorite. So I just want to put that out there. And we continue to look for um, summer help needed um, for pool lifeguards, pool rec, and summer interns here in town. Um, so I know those applications are up, and uh, we've been doing social media promotions regarding SANE, which is great. So hopefully those positions uh, can get filled sooner rather than later. So we can have the pool fully staffed when it's ready to be opened. And then I, too, want to welcome Shauna Bridal. Thank you for uh, representing the council this weekend at the ribbon cutting ceremony. I know Taff and Newton did an article regarding same and it looks great. Can't wait to go visit the store myself. It's, um, in addition to the bridal that they have, they have they have other as they have dresses. Well. Yeah, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Councilor Schlapper? Uh not for me just looking forward to EDC meeting tomorrow night. Okay. Tom? Uh, just a couple things. One, we're, we're going to start disseminating some information on uh, COVID-19. Um, the county health department and the county freeholders have given us some information along with the uh, state league municipalities and the uh, managers association. So we're going to start pushing that information out tomorrow on social media and on the town website just so people can be informed and make uh, reasoned uh, decisions about how they uh, behave and the things that they do. And as far as the pool, um, we were just confirming with the engineer about the depth for the, the deep end, raising it. Um, we had talked about, um, and John Chaco had confirmed that that is, is to meet code standards. So Ursula was going to just double check with uh, Joe Budo tomorrow just to confirm that. But right now the plan is to leave the design as it went out to bid because that was the standard that the code required. So I'll keep you posted. That's it. Thank you. Moving on to ordinances. We have the second reading and the public hearing for Ordinance 2020-3, an ordinance granting municipal consent to the issuance of a franchise to Service Electric Cable TV of New Jersey and Corp to construct, own, operate, extend, and maintain a cable television system in the town of Newton, New Jersey, County of Sussex, setting forth conditions accompanying the grant of said municipal consent and providing for the regulation and use of said system and revising Chapter A-326 cable franchise of the Town of Newton Code. At this point, I need a motion to open the hearing to the public. So moved. Second. I have a motion to open the hearing to the public by Council Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by um, Deputy Mayor Flynn. Anyone wished from, wishing from the public? Excuse me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, anyone from the public wish to make any comments on this? Seeing none coming forward, I'll offer a motion to close that portion of the hearing. I'll second. I have a motion to close the hearing to the public by Deputy Mayor Flynn and a second by Councilwoman LaFleur. All in favor? Aye. 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 At this point, I need a motion to act on the ordinance. I'll make a motion to act on Ordinance 2020-3. And I'll second. I have a motion to act on Ordinance 2020-3 by Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by Councilman Schaffer. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Schaffer? Yes. Mr. LaFleur? Yes. Mayor Diglio? Yes. The next ordinance for the second reading and public hearing is 2020-4 an ordinance to exceed the 2020 municipal budget appropriation limit and to establish a cap bank, NJSA 40A colon 4-45 period 14. Do I have a motion to open the hearing to the public? So moved. A second. I have a motion to open the hearing to the public by Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by Councilman Schaffer. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I have anyone from the ordinance who wishes to comment? on this ordinance? Yes. This ordinance, not this number, but this ordinance seems to come Can up. Can you please state your name oh, and address? Of all, 59 Trinity Street here. <clears throat> 
this ordinance seems to come up <laughs> annually. Yes, it I'm does. I'm wondering, in this case, uh, is it being done because of something that Mr. Russo had said before about the pool, or is there some other reason at this time to pass an ordinance like this? Is it just in case of, or is there some reason specific reason at this time? No, they would. We can address that one. Monica and I can address that for you, Mr. Mullen, when the public portion concludes for this. Okay. Might as well stay here because I want to comment on the next. <laughs> is there anyone else who wishes to comment on this particular ordinance? See now, make a motion to close the hearing to the public. No, second. I have a motion to close the hearing to the public from Councilwoman LaFleur and a second from Councilman Schlaffer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, Monica, you just give the 30,000 foot view on how this is done annually and what the purpose is. Of oh, the yes. Um, the levy. Uh, just speak into the microphone. Right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> the levy cap ordinance is basically a safety net if uh, expenditures, if uh, emergency appropriations come up during the year and it gives us a cushion if we don't pass the the ordinance it gives us a cushion of 96,000 and if we don't pass it we have to pay attorney auditor town manager and myself to go down to Trenton to talk with the DCA Department of Community Affairs as to why we did not do this as part of our budget introduction nothing at this time it was not in the budget Oh, no, not at all. I think it's important to reinforce the fact that it is generally not utilized by the council because we create the budget within the appropriations that are given by state statute. And this gives us, like Monica said, a safety net if, if there, there, was more time, there would be a, a, a financial catastrophe in town. Yeah. The ability to respond to an emergency. And it's, it's a cushion mm -hmm. on paper, so it's there if it's needed. If not, it'll lapse after a couple of years, but otherwise, it's just a safety net on paper. So. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to act on this ordinance? I'll make a motion to act on ordinance 2020-4. And I'll second the motion. I have a motion to act on Ordinance 2020-4 by Deputy Mayor Flynn and a second by Councilman Schlaffer. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Schlaffer? Yes. Mrs. LaFoy? Yes. Mayor Diglio? Yes. Moving on to Ordinance 2020-5, an ordinance vacating a portion of Spring Street in the town of Newton. Do I have a uh, motion to open the hearing to the public? So moved. Second. I have a motion to open the hearing to the public by Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by Deputy Mayor Flynn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anyone from the public who wishes to address this ordinance? Maybe I can be heard from here. What portion is being made? You have to state your name and address again. Michael Mullen, 59 Trinity Street, Newton, New Jersey. Thank you, Michael. Shall I repeat the question? Very simple. What portion of Spring Street is being vacated? Tom's going to bring it up here for you. It's a very, very small triangle. If you turn around, you will see it right there. Or up right here. Just that. Just a little gray area. It's like a right away adjustment. Right? Yes. Yeah. Ursula, you want to speak to that? Is it that bluish gray? Yeah, it's 1,330 square feet or 0 0.031 acres, and it essentially just helps make it more regularly shaped and provides for 33 feet further than the center line of Spring Street, also. So Where it cleans it. Up. I don't see any streets. Oh, yes. Yes. So to this is Spring Street, and then this is Delaware Ave. Right. It was right by the Moose Lodge. It used to be there. Yeah. 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 Spring. The beginning of the east, it was actually where the easement was. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so the old real Moose Lodge and I yeah, came out of the building. Yeah. Yeah. Train yeah. station plaza is just up a little bit. Ah, sorry. So she thought it was magic. Here's if you're coming, Diller. That's that three way stop. This is where the stop sign is? Yeah. That's where Thor Labs is working right now. So it's that 
Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to close the hearing to the public. Second. I have a motion to close the hearing to the public by Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by Deputy Mayor Flynn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll offer Ordinance 2020-5. And I will second <coughs> the motion. Okay. Um, I have a motion to continue with Ordinance 2020-5 by Councilwoman LaFleur and a second by Councilman Schlaffer. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Schlaffer? Yes. LaFroix? Yes. Mayor Diglio? Yes. We do not have any. Is um, Resolution 7320 is all business? Yes. We have Resolution 7320, a resolution authorizing chain or change orders number 14 and 22 for Firehouse number 2. For those that were not here at the last meeting, this was originally on that agenda and it was tabled to be on this agenda. We have Tom Costin, our architect, and Corey Stone, our engineer, for the project. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. 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 Jump in. Yeah. Well, the reason I the reason I pulled this off the consent agenda was I had been to the firehouse twice. The work is is great. It's sound. I like I love the building. I like the design. All all seemed well. The the one looming item was these brackets that were just hanging there. And maybe I understood incorrectly, but I thought they were coming down. And we talked about this ventilation system. So I'd been there twice, and then I saw these things, and I didn't want them to just. Uh, I didn't want them to just the contractor to completely walk off the site if these things are in fact yeah. and that's it um, so they were installed for the vehicle exhaust system uh, that is currently being stored at the DPW building and there was some questioning by the, the fire department do we have to have the vehicle exhaust system because they did not care for the hangers aesthetically hanging down from the ceiling um, when we were doing, the, if, I, if I go through this step yeah. by step, I yeah. think we'll yeah. clarify it a little better. So when we were doing the design, the vehicle exhaust system in the original firehouse was in decent shape. So instead of putting a new one in this firehouse, the direction was remove it from the old one before it's demolished and then reinstall it in the new firehouse. So that's exactly what happened when the, the original firehouse was about to be demoed vehicle exhaust system was removed and stored and then when it was brought to the new firehouse for installation in the new firehouse several elements were missing from it it had two uh, hanger supports for the track so what goes under the hangers that you see is a continuous track the vehicle exhaust system runs on we directed the contractor that he had to install the system as per the manufacturer's recommendations and it came with two hangers but if you flip to the next page this is page 16 of the installation instructions and it says that the track should be supported approximately eight feet on center at the most you can see that in the note number one and in uh, element number three it says eight feet and each one of these hangers is supposed to support up to 1,010 pounds. So the track is of a distance that if you divide it by eight, needs a total of six hangers, not two, which is what the original system had. Okay. So we insisted that the manufacturer install it as per 
the vehicle exhaust system's recommendations. In addition to the vertical hangers that you see, it had to be diagonally braced, as you see in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, I'm assuming everybody understands how the system works. The vehicle, okay. All right, so he, because we required eight, uh, and it came with two, I'm sorry, it required six and it came with two. We needed four additional support hangers per track. There's two tracks in there, one for each vehicle. So there's a total of eight additional support hangers along with all the required bracing. And that is still in the firehouse as we sit now. If you go to the third sheet, there's a photo of what is currently there. Those are all the additional hangers and the diagonal bracing that the contractor installed. Yeah, so clearly the span on the old one was way more than eight feet. So. Yes, yes, exactly. So when they originally submitted their change order to install all the additional hangers, it was approximately $7,000. We had some discussions with them and they re reduced that price to $4,733.28 and they agreed not to put their contractor's markup on top of the sub's work to reduce costs. And because we told them to install it as per the manufacturer's recommendations, that's what they did, that's what they paid for it to get done, and why we re recommended the approval of it. But uh, I'm just missing the crucial step. You had them install it, but then did it ultimately just not work with the vehicles or something like that? So the fire department asked, they, they didn't care for, they liked the open look of the apparatus bay. They said, can we get rid of the vehicle exhaust system? So we asked our engineer to review the code, and there is an exception in the code that we provided to the building inspector. So there's two elements to this. One is there's an exception that says depending on how they function, how they operate the firehouse, if they turn on the apparatus and pull out of the garage right away, they do not need to have a vehicle exhaust system. In addition to that, there is a whole apparatus bay exhaust system as a fail-safe so that if carbon monoxide levels get to a certain point, it will kick on. Yeah, the big louver power fan yeah. or something like that. Right. So when we explained that to the building inspector and said, if you're hesitating to allow them to remove it, we do have this other provision, and it goes on as soon as the garage doors go open and as soon as CO2 levels kick up to a certain point. So he felt comfortable with those two to say, I'm not going to insist you install the vehicle exhaust system. So the track and the vehicle exhaust system is currently being stored at the DPW facility. Oh, the, the apparatus has been taken down from the ceiling. Yes, and if you go to the last picture, you'll actually see what the rest of the assembly is. The long horizontal element is the track that actually supports it, and then the hose and everything else hangs from that track. That's what is being stored at the DPW building. And I recall from our visit there, I think as soon as the doors open, the exhaust goes on, yeah. which is what you just said. It was an option, but I think we did do that. Yes. So that's what's currently happening. Correct. So all these steel brackets, they're staying there? They can, so they're connected by Unistrut connectors. They can be removed. Our recommendation is if they are, store them because what the building inspector said is if I don't like the way you're functioning in the firehouse, I'm going to insist that you put a vehicle exhaust system back in. So are they going to come down or not? I guess they can come down at this point. They're not down. Currently that picture is what where it stands. The contractor's not taking them down. No. The DPW re removed the track and the vehicle exhaust system, but we told them to hold off on removing the hangers until we had a discussion with them. Designed that didn't need it. So, 
Uh, nothing to do with the design now. I mean, this is just this. It's just minor. Like now, I mean, they're, they're just steel brackets there. They're if you're not going to install the track and the vehicle exhaust system, our recommendation would be to take them down and store them with that system in case it has to go back up. It's it's not as easy as it sounds because you need a lift to get it down. Yeah. Would it be wise to leave them up for a period of time to make sure that the systems are working before we take anything down? I would think so. Okay. So leave them up for a period of time to make sure that everything is going to be, and we're not going to be told that we need to put the other system up. As long as you're telling me we can rent a scissor lift and take them down with appropriate safety gear, that we, the town, can take them down in the future if we need to, we don't have to like. Bring back right, some special equipment and bring back side town. And, yeah. No, DPW could do all the removals. Right. The most expensive thing would be to get a lift yeah. if yeah. you didn't have You'll rent it for a day. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So we'll leave it up for a period of time. I think that just makes sense. I think yeah. it makes sense to make sure that we're not going to be told that we have to install the system. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know if Corey can you speak to any of the other change orders? Or anything else from your the other one was related to, I think it's late, listed as number 22, was the uh, was additional concrete sidewalk and curbing uh, that was required, uh, basically their as-built quantities. Uh, the majority of that quantity came from, um, uh, there was a section of, uh, we had to change the curb, uh, the curb, uh, the handicap, uh, you know, island, you know, the ramp at the intersection of Woodside, and uh, and when we did that, we had to take the curbing out of the sidewalk. We didn't have that plan for the curbing uh, portion of that. And then right by the entrance, uh, to the, if you're looking at the, uh, uh, the, the main driveway into the facility to the right, we, uh, we have all of our drainage from the site gets collected in the parking lot and then comes out into um, to the drainage out in the street. And we plan on putting an inlet over top of the, uh, the pipe that was there. But when they opened, opened up the pipe, the open up the, uh, the the top of the pipe to put a doghouse in on, on top. Dan knows what I mean by a doghouse. It's an inlet right over top of an existing pipe. The pipe was slid back about a foot. It was, uh, we couldn't get the structure over top of it. So we had to slide the, the, the uh, structure back. And the DPW did not want to have a, kind of like a recessed inlet. So we had to replace a section of curb inside what we didn't plan on. Basically, yeah, I'm all I'm all good with that. Um, so basically, they, they were as they were site changes uh, during construction, uh, uh, as well numbers. Actually, the one thing that's coming to mind now that you mention it is that right outside the main door, where there was like gases, plumbing is uh, installed for the grills that they want to put there in the future. Yes. There's that one. There's that Type A inlet there, and that's good because it, I mean it's gonna it's gonna collect all that water, and it's clearly never gonna back up. I mean, but is that like an issue with like trip? Is that like a trip hazard right now? Like, is there a cover they can put on? To, like, I mean, when you, back open, <coughs> when you open the door to go towards the little retaining wall that was built, yes. How do you buy the barbecue grills? Where the barbecue grills mm -hmm. that are not the grills that it's, are in, not it's inside the patio area. Yeah. Is it raised? No. Okay. It's just is that like a tripping hazard for okay. like people to because it's like not, it's something you would normally step on on a street, but it's yeah. like it's right there. But it's flush. It's okay. It is flush. Yeah, I think I think it's okay. Uh, okay. I think the only thing with, uh, they do have to repair it during the. Uh, um, uh, well, they were waiting spring. until the spring. Uh, yeah. I guess we're here now. Is the uh, uh, they did have a leak with the service line that went from the building yeah. back out to the grill. So they had to have some. They had to open up the asphalt back in the corner there by the um, by the generator. There's some patches they have to yeah. do back there because they they did have a leak. Um, the gas, so they uh, they corrected that issue, but uh, it's got some repair work they need to do. So they were waiting until spring, but I guess uh, winter never uh, truly came. They could they could do that now. Overall, I like the functionality of the building. I was saying it has like a very it's it's very rigid, functional. It doesn't have a lot of frills, which is like, all the things that we wanted. It has a uh, you know it's gonna it's gonna last a very long time. And that's that's really what we wanted out of the project. So, and the fact that it was on budget. I mean, I think that's really important yes. to note. As we both have our engineering and architect here, Tom, your team finance. Uh, um, you know, despite weather delays and whatnot, the ability to be able to stay on budget um, for a large project. 
maybe not large compared to the rest of the state, but certainly for our town, um, it, it's commendable. So thank you both for your services and your office's services and certainly um, everybody's patience. Um, I know the community was long awaiting because um, the building was built and there was a couple of last final things that took those last few months, but um, you know, despite the delayed timeline, we still remain on budget, which is important because that's not usually what happens. Zaytone did a very good job, just for the record. Yeah, you're happy with mm -hmm. their work, is it? Do they do a lot of these public type of buildings? I believe they built the original firehouse mm -hmm. 100 years ago. Yeah, so they've been around Back so when basements time. were in style. And <laughs> 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 for a firehouse. <laughs> they had photos of it, I think. Uh, yeah. Of it being erected is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. there's some place they have photos. That'd be interesting to see yeah. the original photos. Mm -hmm. They should put them up. They have the hundred-year-old table. That's uh, they were able to save and put in there. So, mm -hmm. been working on that one. Yes. No, and, and thank you guys. I think the, there was contributions on, on the plaque that was that was put up there. So we yes, we appreciate that. Thank you both very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I'll offer resolution seventy-three dash twenty twenty. Second. Second. I Resolution 73 2020 has been offered by Council Blancall and seconded by Deputy Mayor Flynn. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Flocker? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mayor Biglia? Yes. Moving on to the consent agenda, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and non controversial by the Town Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Tom, will you please review the resolutions? Sure. Resolution 80 is appointment of our alternate municipal prosecutor. Resolution 81 introduces the 2020 municipal and water sewer utility budgets. 82, 83, and 84 are credits due water sewer. Utility accounts, 85 is a refund of redemption monies for 45 Mason. Have resolution 86, bills and vouchers, and then we have an application for a Newton Sports Bar and Grill for the uh, Saturday, March 21st date of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Does any member wish to have any other resolution removed or discussed? No. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to... Approve the consent agenda. Take it out. Um, I'll second. I have a motion by Councilman Schlaffer to approve the consent agenda and a second by Councilwoman LaFleur. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Schlaffer? Yes. LaFleur? Yes. Mayor Diglio? Yes. I do not believe there's any further discussion, so I will open the meeting to the public again if anyone wishes to make any comments. With no one coming forward, I'll move on to council and manager com comments. Are there any other comments for the council? Tom, nice job on the annual report. You and the team put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's available. And uh, I think it's pretty comprehensive. And hopefully, people will read it and um, be able to use it as a resource uh, going forward for our businesses and for our towns. I think there's a lot of valuable information here. And, Almost anything you wanted to know about the town currently in terms of uh, financial status and uh, departments and who's where and um, criminal activity or lack thereof, really. Um, it's all in the annual report. So, nice job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tom, do you have any other comments? Uh, just that the uh, hearing for the budget will be April 13th, and that night, Dr. Green will also be in attendance to give a presentation on the school budget. Mm -hmm. With no other comments, and we do not have an executive session, do I have a motion for an adjournment? So moved. 741, second. I have a motion to adjourn at 741 by Deputy Mary Flynn and a second by Councilwoman LaFleur. Roll call, please. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Flopper? Yes. Mr. LaFleur? Yes. Mayor DiGlio? Yes. 